In the last few videos I've shown how we can build a digital tone generator uh, and a temporary way to hook it up to the 6522 which we will go back and change a bit later. At the end of the last video, if you did watch to the end, you will have seen a little teaser for this one where I had my computer play this little outro melody. And what we're going to talk about in this video is how we actually work out what numbers to program into the registers here so that we get actual musical notes out as I have in this melody. So to start with that, let's take a quick look at some Python code. So here's a little Python program I wrote to calculate what frequencies we need to use for each note. I'll explain it a little bit, but I won't go too deep into the maths, but I will explain how you can adapt this in case, in particular, your crystal frequency is not the same as mine. So the crystal frequency is defined here as base frec. My, frequency, my, my crystal has 1843200 printed on the side. If you're using a 2 MHz crystal here, for example, you would just put 2 million here. Uh, this first commented outline here is just showing the basic calculation for what the output frequency from our digital tone generator is going to be. So the output frequency is going to be the base frequency divided by a power of 2 using the first down counter, which we are going to program always with a power of 2 count, um, and that's going to act as an octave divider. Then it's going to be divided by some value m I've put here from the second down counter. We can put any value we like for that, but I'm always going to use numbers which are from 128 up to 255. And I'll explain that in a little bit later. It's just due to the relationship with the octave divider. Uh, and finally, it gets divided by 2 one more time. And the reason for that final divide by 2 is the 74HCT74 uh, D flip flop, which we're using to square up and even up the duty cycle. That actually has the side effect of also dividing the frequency by 2. The second line down here shows what we need to do to calculate how to output a particular frequency, which I've put frec here. This function here calculates this target multiplier exactly using the line in the comment above. And then it does a logarithm to work out what the power of 2 needs to be. And then it does uh, some sort of remainder -y stuff to work out what the, rem what the remnant is that needs to go into m, and it returns those. Again, I don't want to explain the maths of that in too much detail. Um, it's probably not interesting to a lot of people. But comment below if you want to know a bit more about that and I can explain it a bit more in the comments in that case. The rest of this is just uh, going through all of the notes we want to produce and doing some calculations for those frequencies. So it's running the function above to work out what numbers we need to use. So let's have a look at what the output looks like from this script. I'll just run that here, and you can see that on the top line there, A at 220 hertz, it says we're going to get that if we set the octave divider to 5 and the sub-octave division to 131. Then the next line down shows that B flat is 233 hertz in that octave, and here the octave divider is now reduced to 4, and the sub-octave divider has wrapped around all the way back up to 247. So I said before I was going to keep the sub-octave between 128 and 256. And yeah, keeping, keeping the sub-octave divider in that high range ensures that we get the best precision we can out of this scheme. So what I've got here is the program that we used previously to loop over all of the frequencies we could output and send them to the digital oscillator. I've removed the guts of it, which did the loop, and left just the initialization code and this stop at the end. All we're going to do is program in the frequency for the note A above middle C, and then we'll run that on the breadboard and just make sure that we're getting the right note out. So for the octave, I can pick, it, pick pretty much any octave I like. Um, I think the number that came out of the Python script was 4 or 5 or something. So let's go with octave number 5. Um, and the Remember the way the octave divider works is we always set it to a power of 2 minus 1. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So if I subtract 1 from that, I get 31. So, so let's load 31 and store it in port A, which is how we set the octave. 
Remember the octave divider is just connected straight to port A at the moment. Then the note we wanted was was a uh, was A, and we calculated with the Python script that to get an A, we need to set the sub octave divider to 131. Sorry, we need the sub octave divider to be 131, and that means that we need to set the countdown value for the sub octave, uh, sub -octave divider to one less than 131. That is 130. So let's load up 130 and store that in port B. And that is how we're going to set the pitch within the octave. And that's all we need to do here. Nothing fancy, we're just setting these numbers out on the 6522. That will cause the oscillator to start oscillating with those frequencies and then we're just going to let the CPU fall through into the, into the stop loop here and loop forever. So let's go and try that out and make sure that we do get the right frequency for the note A, which is 440 hertz. So I've got that EPROM programmed up and put into the circuit, and I have a multimeter here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the frequency of that tone. And remember we set the, we set the pitch to be uh, a note A. I think we set it to be one octave higher than in the calculation from the Python script. So we're expecting 440 hertz here. I'm just going to attach the probes, set it to hertz, I'm going to attach the probes to the output of the D-latch and I'll turn that on and we'll see what happens. So you can hear the tone pretty clearly and you can see on the display here that we're getting 439.6 hertz. Turn that down a bit. So that's perfect. So now that we've checked that the frequency being output is what we expected for the note A, let's see what we can do for playing some different notes. So this is the same program as before, uh, except I've added this little array here now. This is just a block of data, and it contains all of the remainder values, all of the sub-octave divider values that were output by the, by the script I showed you earlier. What I've done here is I've sorted them into descending order, and I've subtracted one from each value for the reasons I, I, I mentioned before. So previously 131 was the top entry in the list. That's now at the bottom of the list and it's been reduced to 130. And the next one was 247. That's been reduced to 246 and it's at the start of the list because it's a higher value. What this means is that we now have 12 different sub-octave divider values here which will give us the 12 semitones of the scale. So what I'm going to do first of all is just make it play each of those notes in sequence. We'll get that running on the breadboard and make sure that sounds correct. So this place here where we're currently hard coding 130, I need to read a value from this list. Um, and in order to do that, what I will do is set up a loop. And we're going to loop on X, I guess. It doesn't really matter what we loop on, but let's load X with zero to start with. Um, and I'm going to, I'll put a label out a loop around this because we're going to have to loop back to this to make it play the sequence again and again. So x starts at zero, um, and then we will we can have an inner loop next. And inside the inner loop, we uh, instead of loading 130 into a, we're going to load notes comma x, and what that means is we load the value from memory location notes plus x. So x starts as 0. That means the first value we load is going to be this 246 here. Later we're going to increment x. x is going to become 1. And then we're going to load this value here, the 232, and so on. We're just going to keep going up and up and up. So we load that value into the accumulator and store that in port b which is what we were doing before, but it's just with a variable value now. Once that's done, we're going to have a short delay. I'm going to use the same delay routine here I did in the last video. And after the delay, we can increment x, compare x against 12, because there are only 12 entries in our data list. If it's not 12, we can go back to loop again. And if it is 12, we need to go back to outer loop instead, which will reset x to 0 and carry on again. So this will now run indefinitely. 
let's put the little delay routine in here. I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. So that's a fairly standard delay loop. It'll it'll wait for I think about a third of a second um, at the clock speed I'm running at, which is one megahertz. So let's go and see what happens when we run this program. So now it's all programmed up with the second program for this video, which will play a scale, a chromatic scale, across one octave. I think it's from B flat up or something like that. I can't remember which note's which, but let's turn it on and see if it works. So that worked pretty well. We got a nice little chromatic scale, only one octave's worth though. So let's go ahead now and add code to control the octave divider. So what I'm going to do is after this notes array here, I'm going to add a, a second array for octaves, and we're going to put the different values in here that we want to use for the octave divider. I'm going to start at 63. It's not technically the highest one the circuit can do, but I think it's about as high as we'd ever need to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep coming down through all of the values which are one less than a power of two. So we, we're going to define six octaves worth of values here. So now we're going to go back up to the loop, and where, whereas this loop was simply looping through the semitones using x, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add y to this as well. Um, let's... I'm just going to create another loop outside it called outer outer loop. Sorry, I'm not feeling very creative in terms of names of loops at the moment. And I'm going to load y here with... I'm not going to load it with zeros. I'm, what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to use y to index into the octaves data to pull out that octave value. I don't want to use 63 because I think that's going to be a bit much. So I'm going to start y off at 1. This then flows straight into the original outer loop and we're going to load the note as before and set that, then have the delay. That's all fine. And then we increment x, compare it against 12, and if it was less than 12, we loop around again. That's all fine. x is going to loop exactly as before. The difference here is now what we do when x does reach 12. We're still going to go back to outer loop eventually in order to reduce x back down to 0 again. But before we do that, we're going to increment y. Uh, and we'll compare y against, how high should we go, where's that octave list gone? Uh, one, two, three, four, let's, let's do four octaves worth. So if y reaches four, then we're going to loop back round. We can, you can always play with these numbers if you want to try something different, but I think that'll be interesting. I'm going to be any back to outer loop at this point. And this, this final jump at the end becomes a jump to outer outer loop in order to reset y back to 1 again. Now the piece that's missing here is obviously we're not actually using the value of y. So what we need to do is we need to take this code to set the octave. And I'm just going to move it down here just inside outer loop. We're not going to load 31 anymore. We're going to load the value from y plus octaves and that's going to get stored into port A to set the octave just like it was before. So the reason I put the code here is because this, in this location it runs on the first iteration through the loop, it runs any time y has been set back to 1 by jumping back to outer outer loop, and it also runs just after y is incremented each time, because as soon as y is incremented, even if it doesn't wrap around, we branch back to outer loop. So it's important that this is inside outer loop so that it does actually execute after the y increment as well as the first time through the loop. So I think that should be it. Let's write that out, put it on a netprom and see what it sounds like. Now we have the netprom programmed with the program which will play a chromatic scale across three octaves and then loop it round again. Let's see how that sounds. So that sounds right. It starts off with exactly the same octave. There's a transition into the second octave. And that was the transition into the third octave.
So as always, I hope you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a deeper explanation, especially of some of the maths behind this. I, did, I wanted to leave that out of the video because um, it's, it's a bit hard to follow, but I can certainly explain it a bit more in the comments if people are interested. And in the next video on this topic, I'm planning to wrap up some of the code we've written here into some functions that, um, that make it easier to play specific notes and maybe show how to actually sequence a tune. So yeah, if you're interested in that, make sure you do subscribe and get notifications and I'll see you next time.